Most people think of the United Arab Emirates as a desert country, but its richest habitats are actually in the sea. From seagrass beds to mangrove stands and beautiful coral reefs, in the Arabian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman. And there are 17 species of whales and dolphins in UAE waters, including endangered Indian Ocean humpback dolphins, finless porpoises, elusive brutus whales, and a unique population of humpback whales, so rare there could be fewer than 100 left. But they're living in a pressure cooker. Their habitat happens to be in one of the most human-stressed places in the ocean among some of the world's busiest shipping lanes, mega ports, and huge coastal developments. And for some of these species, scientists know so little about them that they could be in trouble without anyone realizing it. We are losing species every day. We can't just let the species disappear because there's a lack of knowledge. We need to go to the different places of the Earth and know what we have, and we need to conserve. The first step to saving them is spotting them. Dr. Ada Natoli has been tracking the whale and dolphin populations of the UAE for more than a decade. Aha, there. Can you see it? What is it? Can you see it? On the left of the white boy. Today, she's in Abu Dhabi conducting a dolphin survey with the Environment Agency of Abu Dhabi, and she's hoping to spot the Indian Ocean humpback dolphin in city waters. It might be surprising that endangered dolphins are living in the middle of a city of two and a half million people. Oh, yes. Two, three, four, five, six. But they'll only make their home in shallow coastal waters. The species will rarely venture more than a mile offshore, so they've had to adapt to city life. They're traveling. Have you seen them, uh, Hamda? They are between that mangroves and that kind of structure, can you see them? They like to be like us, you know, not very far away from home. They like their waters and that makes local population even more vulnerable. There are about 700 Indian Ocean humpback dolphins living in the waters around Abu Dhabi. That's the largest known population in the world but they're living in the middle of intense coastal development, fishing activity, vessel traffic, and things are only getting busier. And because of their habitat needs, they can't just move elsewhere. How can we coexist? The answers lie with these surveys. Scientists can build a detailed picture of how these animals live, how they use their habitat, where they spend their time, what's harming them the most, and from there, the best way to protect them. That is a side leap. Ladies, I got you the humpback dolphins of Abu Dhabi. They are in the city. But when it comes to the whales and dolphins living further offshore in the UAE's waters, there's a problem. Scientists know almost nothing about their lives because they've never been able to conduct a dedicated survey here until now. They've joined Ocean Explorers Expedition in the UAE with a multidisciplinary team on a mission to find and document these whales. At the top of their list is the Brutus whale. They're sometimes called tropical whales and they live in warm waters worldwide. They're one of the least understood baleen whales in the world. Scientists have barely glimpsed Brutus whales in UAE waters. There are only occasional sightings reported by the public. No one knows if Brutus whales live here year round or if they're migrating from somewhere else or how many of them there might be here. In the past few years, more than a dozen have washed up dead on local beaches. For a population we know so little about, that's a concerning number. There's an urgent need to understand how the whales use these waters and how to protect them. That makes this expedition a high stakes game of hide and seek. I always think that people that join these, this type of research are gamblers it's because we gamble in every day to say, okay, I can see the most exciting species um, that maybe has been sighted like only a few times in these waters, or I can come home with absolutely nothing. There, there, there! There, there, there! We've got the position. I think there's definitely more than one. The gamble pays off. Ada and her team spot a pair of Brutus whales feeding. This is the first time these animals have ever been documented during a scientific survey in UAE waters. 
In one of the ship's state-of-the-art labs, Ada has brought tissue samples collected from local whale and dolphin strandings. She and her team extract DNA from these samples and sequence the complete genomes of seven UAE species, including the Brutus whales and humpback dolphins they've been studying. It's the first time anyone has decoded the genetic blueprints of these local populations. We made it, JP! We got some DNA! Good. And this is, look, 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 humpback whale. Many times samples are collected and then they end up nowhere in a lost freezer. It's so difficult to do genetic analysis still for many, many, you know, field work people that works uh, with these animals. So this is super exciting. These genetic blueprints will serve as a crucial reference point, not only for the UAE, but for the entire Northern Indian Ocean region, helping track where these populations move, how they differ from global populations, and even how they'll adapt to changing seas. This genetic work, combined with the survey data, is just what scientists need to protect these species. But how does all of this data actually translate into protecting whales? The only way to actually protect them is to understand what their needs in an environment, understand their threat, mitigate the threat, and uh, you know make sure that what is needed for their survival is there. If we are protecting like the area where the species is breeding, is nice. But if I'm not protecting where the species fits, I will really lost that population. It's very important to understand how the different species use the different habitats and also to protect those corridors between these different habitats. And that's where science can point the way. There are examples where having information of where, uh, in which season whales are uh, more occurring in area or what are the corridors that they utilize, shipping lanes can slightly be moved or uh, the navigation can be advised to be a less speed in certain period of the season when these species are more present. I'm convinced that uh, there are uh, possibility of mitigating threats if we understand what can be done exactly to, to support them and to make them effective for these species. Together, the two baselines from this expedition, the survey data and the genomes, will give scientists and conservation managers something they've never had before, a clear starting point for protecting the animals in these offshore waters and all of the life that depends on them. Whales and dolphins play a huge role in recycling nutrients throughout the ecosystem and losing them would upset the balance of all marine life. And that's what makes this quest to count them so critical, not only for these species, but for the entire ocean ecosystem.